right, I'll say how are you all this evening of your time as you create time to exist. Are you all alive? Thank you very much. Allow us to begin this interaction this evening of your time with the laying down of a few foundational ideas so that we may have some commonality between us for this interaction. We are, as you have heard, the idea of extraterrestrial. That idea simply meaning that we too, as yourself, have physical embodiment. We do have a planet upon which we do reside. We do have the idea of similar physicality as yourself. The idea being we are approximately five feet of your height. Have the idea of one head, one torso, two arms, two legs, similar to yourself. Our skin is white gray in coloration and our eyes are almond shaped upturned that idea we if there was an analogy to be drawn to a particular nationality upon your planet would be similar though not exactly to the idea you would label mongolian we are a bit shall we say more humanoid in terms of your appearance then, shall we say, the alien pictures you have seen recently in your society, particularly that upon, all right, the book you label Communion. We are a bit more human-like than that idea. We do not insist in any way, shape, or form that because it is us delivering information to you that you do need believe it. No. For we look and view at all information, at all perspectives, at all points of view as a gift which may be freely offered by any individual but without the idea that it must be in any way, shape or form accepted by the recipient. For the idea of gift giving is free. You may accept it if you wish. If it works for you, very good. Feel free to use it. If not, I promise you, you will find something else that does. Therefore, again, to capsulize this idea, you do not need to believe anything we are saying because we are saying it. No. Simply allow things to be tried out in your vernacular. Allow things to be tried on and see what works for you. You may find if you do have some willingness to expand your consciousness, to expand yourself, to self-empower yourself, that much of the information we will share will be most helpful. However, again, we do not insist in any way that you do accept it. It is up to you. Similarly, when offering us your gifts, we may choose to accept them and we may choose to not accept them. However, we assure you, when we do not, we are not invalidating it. For we validate all viewpoints, all realities. We understand the idea that the ultimate truth is composed of all truths. Therefore, all truths are true for those who it is serving at that timing. And not that it is this or that. Simply it is this and that, and you do have a choice. Therefore, in that regard, we will proceed with this idea. You know, or have become, shall we say, aware of the idea that you are reincarnational beings. Very good. This is an understanding that incorporates, shall we say, the idea that you are multi-dimensional, infinite, and eternal, and simply move from face to face, from scenario to scenario, to grow, to experience. Very good. Reincarnational idea notwithstanding, however, you will only be the you you are now one time. You will never be this you you are again. Therefore, from our perspective, the overall purpose as many of you constantly ask us about what is my purpose in life, what is my mission in life, 
is simply to be the best you in any given moment that you can, to live your life to the fullest within integrity. For a moment, we shall sidetrack. Our definition of integrity is in no way, shape, or form a moral judgment. It is simply the recognition of integration. The idea that everything is really part and parcel of all one thing anyway. Therefore, by looking at everything around you as a part of yourself, you do not need to force yourself upon another. You do not need to inflict your point of view upon another. You do not need to hurt yourself or others in any circumstance, for that is not a recognition of the integration of all things. Therefore, when we say with integrity, we simply do mean within the recognition of integration of all things. Now, one might ask, all right, I can understand what you are saying. I can understand that being the best me that I can be makes some sense to me. But how do I go about being the best me that I can be? Thank you very much for asking. I will answer. The idea being what you label upon your planet, excitement, has to some degree carried with it many different meanings. Allow us now to expound upon our meaning of excitement. For to us, it is your arrow, your barometer, your way to see what is most you. For to us, the idea of excitement can be defined as follows. Excitement, colon. The idea being that excitement is the physicalized translation of the vibratory energy of the path that you chose to be in this lifetime. Simply put, this is why certain ideas are exciting to you and maybe not to another. What excites you, what allows you to feel attraction for it, love for it, is your indication from what you sometimes label your higher self that this is most you. There are many belief systems and recognize that you do create your own reality through what you believe to be most likely. Your belief systems do create your physical reality and I mean that literally. Therefore, if you do believe that living a life of your excitement is one of frivolity, is one of shall we say, hedonism, that is simply a viewpoint. The manner or method of excitement about which we speak is within integrity. Therefore, it will not harm yourself or others. That is part of, shall we say, the criteria to determine whether this is your pure excitement or not. For anxiety is simply excitement with, shall we say, a negative interpretation. Therefore, if you will but recognize that your society has ingrained in you from what you call childhood ideas that living your excitement is frivolous, you can also recognize that you may change that belief. And you may understand that if you are not hurting yourself or others, if you are simply always being of service to those you interact with, if you are having an exciting time while you are doing it, that is okay. That does not breach any of the ideas that you label frivolity, being frivolous. Therefore, if you will but grant yourself your excitement, first your recognition of what it is that does excite you within the recognition of integrity or integration, you will begin to define what is most you. That is simply the first step. You may recognize and realize that many of you, when determining or ex establishing your excitement, that you are not doing what excites you in life. All right? Simply that recognition may now allow you to begin to initiate that momentum toward what excites you. Allow us now to make another distinction. When we say what excites you, we do in fact mean what excites you the most in your entire life, but not only that idea. 
for what excites you the most in your entire life may not be, shall we say, immediately available to you. So, one may ask, how do I get to this point that seems off in the distance? All right, fair enough. The idea being that all excitement is one excitement. All excitement is a thread. You are the being that you are, one complete being. Therefore, everything that excites you is an expression of that one complete being. And therefore, all your excitement, by extension, is one thing, all interrelated, even though it may not appear that way. Therefore, in order to initiate the momentum of which we speak, one needs simply, in any given moment, from the choices available for you to do right now, simply use your excitement within integrity as your criteria. Even though it may seem to have nothing to do with the thing that excites you the most, it does. It is integrally related. In fact, it will lead you to the next thing which will excite you. For again, excitement is a thread. What you will find that by following your moment-to-moment -moment excitement, even though it does not seem to relate to your overall excitement, you acquire the tools, the knowledge, the resources to do the most exciting thing that you cannot do right now. You do this automatically and you do this anyway. We are simply suggesting that you can have a very exciting, fun, joyous, ecstatic time doing it. Does not have to be that being in ecstasy, living excitement, having fun, loving life need be an end goal. No, you can create it that way and many upon your planet do choose to do so. But it can be the path. That is another choice available to you. That it is the path. If you, shall we say, shoot off into the distance, searching for that thing which will finally make you happy, finally make you excited. It takes a long time. And by the time you get there, you don't have much practice being happy, being excited. Simply you may begin now to be excited, to make life the path as well as the destination, although the destination is always changing, always growing, always expanding anyway. Therefore, you may recognize and understand what we are speaking of is self-empowering yourself to create the life, to create the reality you do prefer. We feel that many of you have experienced the idea of creating the reality you do not prefer. Therefore, we are now enabled by your willingness in your mass consciousness. There is enough momentum, enough willingness to take back your power, to live your life, to responsibly create your life the way you prefer, that we are able to interact with you. Everything, everything is composed of vibration. You are, in a sense, each a vibration. The difference in your vibration determines the difference in your physical beingness. One of you is one person and you are a particular vibration. Another is another person and you are a particular vibration. You can only experience the reality that you are the vibration of. Therefore, our vibration is one of unconditional love and light, is one of living a life that excites you is one of a recognition by which anything that occurs in our life is ecstatic and joyful. We only do attract the people, shall we say, colloquially speaking, into our lives who can serve us the most at any given moment. And we are conscious of this idea. You are another vibration. However, your vibration has now come to, shall we say, the sufficient frequency to enable us to interact with you. For we also can only, only experience the reality we are the vibration of. So the very ability for us to communicate with you at this timing 
is your signal, if you choose to look at it that way, that you are becoming of that vibration, that that allowance is there. Otherwise, we could not perceive you. You would be invisible to us. We would be invisible to you. And we would be far too alien to you and you to us to have meaningful interaction. Such was, in a sense, the state of your mass consciousness but hundreds of your years ago. Therefore, our interaction with your planet, shall we say, is relatively new. But there are many beings out there. There are many planets, many worlds out there many of which have been in contact with your planet for hundreds and thousands of your years, many of which have interacted in times past, in ancient times with your societies in a physicalized, blatant way. Some of those are still around. Others are on their way. The reason that we choose at this point to communicate with you in this fashion rather than face-to-face -face, is twofold. First of all, we are of differing vibrations. Not to mean this as any better or any worse, for we look at all as equal in quant quality. There is a quantitative difference, however, in our vibrations. As you do become less physical, as you become more rarefied, your vibration increases. We therefore function, if you will, on a slightly higher vibratory field than you do. When you do bring together a bioenergetic field of a higher vibration with a bioenergetic field, such as you may label your aura, your electromagnetic surrounding field around your body, when you do bring the two in contact, it is like taking two gears which are spinning at different rates and forcing them together. The higher vibration being represented by a faster turning gear. The lower vibration by a slower turning gear. When you do bring these gears together, shall we say, although the effect to some degree will be to slow down the faster turning gear, the far greater effect is to accelerate very quickly the slower turning gear and how this translates in your reality is shall we say a bit tumultuous for we operate and function as 100 percent whole beings you on the other hand have chosen and we are not denigrating this idea simply pointing it out to in a sense chop yourself up into parts and hide parts from each other you have created, shall we say, convenient compartments to hide them in. Your subconscious, your superconscious, your unconscious, and this idea. When your vibration is, shall we say, forced to a higher level, the things that you have shut down within your, shall we say, subconscious closet, do rush all of a sudden to the surface and many of you fear looking at these things. This is why these closets were created in a sense to begin with. Therefore, the effect that we have noticed when beings of your planet do interact with various extraterrestrial beings is what you may label psychotic shock, a intense fear reaction. And we have no desire in any way, shape, or form to elicit this reaction from you. So that would be, shall we say, reason number one. Reason number two is that we do view all forms and expressions of consciousness from the lowest vibratory nature to the highest vibratory nature as equal. Therefore, we can only, in a sense, communicate with you in a blatant, physicalized manner when you will view us as equals. At this timing, many of you do place us above you. All right, we are not, nor do we desire to be. We have all the power we need to create our own reality, and we don't need any of yours. You don't need any of anybody else's. You all have your own power. Therefore, we have noticed in your society a penchant, a propensity, 
two, shall we say, pay more attention to the messenger than the message. To fall down on your knees and bow. And this is not our desire. Our desire is to communicate with you as equals. As individuals. Face to face. Eye to eye. And when you are willing by your own selves to begin to integrate these portions of yourself that you have hidden, colloquially speaking, you then integrate as a being. You are always 100% a 100% being. But we have noticed upon your planet that many individuals use 90% of that power to make it seem as though they are only using 10. Very creative. However, you are 100% beings. And when you will see that whatever is in your experience, your reality serves you, allows you to integrate these buried ideas, then you will begin to use what you already have to integrate yourself. Before we do open this interaction up to sharing or questions and answers or statements, one moment. Allow me to make the following illustration. What you label negative emotionality, which many of you in your vernacular bum out about when it happens, is one of the main keys to integration. If you will but see this, you will take what you have labeled your weaknesses and make them your strengths. For the way that consciousness breaks itself down from all that is, or God as you call it, is in the following steps. Existence is, in a sense, all that is. All that is exists. It simply is. The first separation is the idea of knowingness. The next separation is the idea of belief systems. The next, shall we say, following step is emotion. And the last is thought patterns. Your emotions are simply reactions to your beliefs, the ones next up on the scale. Therefore, any emotion that you do have is simply a reaction to a belief that you have. In order to change your belief, you must own it. You must know what it is. You must be willing to admit it to yourself. Therefore, when you experience what you label negative emotionality, simply realize that any emotion comes from a belief. Allow yourself to assess in an honest fashion, what must I believe to be feeling this way? If you are honest, you will nail down the belief. That is owning it. Then you can change it. Therefore, as you do change the beliefs which you have allowed to be ingrained within you to the beliefs which allow you to live a life you prefer, by convention, you integrate. By convention, the things you have hidden come up. You look at them. You can only create a reality that you can handle. You cannot create any reality that you cannot handle by definition. If you are creating it, you are prepared to handle it. Therefore, use your negative, quote, unquote, emotionality to allow you to hone in on the beliefs which no longer serve you. If you will but do so, the integrative process will be very swift. For we have used the rubber band analogy. Upon your planet, one of the things that you are exploring is extreme negativity. The other thing you are exploring is positivity. 
And the third, shall we say, exploration is the integration of both. You have, however, lean, shall we say, a little bit toward the negative in your society. Right now, the vestiges of that negativity are bubbling up within the face of your planet. They will have very different outcomes than they have in your past. This will be the signpost that this is the transitional age. However, recognize this idea. If you pull your rubber band very tight and consider that this is negativity, when you let it go, it does fling far and fast into the positive. And that is, by definition, the accelerative effect of the transformational age. So therefore, the negativity you are experiencing is simply, in a sense, the pulling of the rubber band. When the rubber band is released, it does not take much time. It is a very accelerative travel to the other extreme of positivity. And this is the transformation that your planet is now going through, what you may label the new age. This is a unique time upon your planet. This is a time whereby you can integrate in one single lifetime. That is another reason we are able to communicate with you at this time. So for your willingness to co-create with us in this manner, for your willingness to explore that you just might create your own reality, for your willingness to be open-minded enough to look at the possibilities of other whole worlds, other whole societies, other whole civilizations, I do thank you and ask you now, how may I be of service to you sharing 